I've taken three pieces of copper wire. They are 12 inches long and the gauge on them is 12. And what I've done is I've annealed them and now I've bound the ends together with some stainless steel wire and that serves two purposes. One, it's gonna keep everything together during soldering and the other is solder won't flow past where the stainless steel wire is. So I'm just gonna stick solder and stick soldering is really just a fancy way of saying I'm gonna feed the solder in by hand rather than cutting chips of it. So we need to heat this up. This is a lot of copper wire here. Flux it. Make sure you get the wire all cleaned up, pickled. Oh, just lost my flame. Got my flame too close to the wire there. Get everything all cleaned and pickled up before you try and solder. Solder is not going to flow. Not ready yet. Because this wire is so long, it takes a little while to heat the wire up sufficiently for the solder to melt, the solder to flow. I have to retrain myself to say flow instead of melt. And just to make sure that I've got solder all the way through, I'm going to flip that over. Grab a tweezer here. Flip it over to make sure I've got it in all three pieces, which doesn't look like it flowed back here. It's not the flame that's going to melt the solder, it's the heat of the metal itself. So once the metal reaches proper temperature, and I'm using hard solder here, once it reaches the proper temperature, it will cause the solder to flow. And we're getting the flow right there. And check the other side. We're all good there. All right, so I'm gonna quench, pickle that, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, I've quenched that. You gotta make sure you take off the stainless steel wire prior to putting it in the pickle, or you're gonna contaminate your pickle. So I'm just using my flush cutters to cut off those pieces of wire. Should get every little piece of steel wire off of there. All right, I'm going to pickle all of this and then we'll be back for the next step. Okay, I've taken my wires and that is the soldered end. And I put the three wires in the other end of this cordless drill. And I'm going to put the soldered ends into the vise. And then I'm going to twist slowly by advancing the drill 
and just continue to do this until you get a amount of coil that you like. Do as little or as much as you would like. All right, we're gonna quit right there. Okay, we'll loosen that. And we're gonna take that and we're gonna run this through the rolling mill. Okay, so I'm gonna take this now and I'm gonna run this through the rolling mill. And I'm not putting the, the um, wheels too close together. There's where it slips through and I wanna back off about a quarter of a turn. That's all I'm gonna do at this point. And I'll see, see if I like it. If not, we'll run it through again with um, an additional turn on the, uh, on the rollers there. Just wanna see what I get. Cause if I do too much to start with, then I can't, you know, I can't go backwards with it. Okay, so that did pretty much nothing. So let's take that a quarter of a turn put it back in. I'm getting a little more resistance there. But let's see. You can see where it's a little shinier right there. That's where it is flattened. I'm going to put it back in exactly through there the way I just had it by adding another quarter turn, putting it through one more time. Okay, you can see how it's getting some flat areas on it now, which looks kind of cool. Let's give it another quarter turn. Yeah, I can hear a little more resistance because I hear the motor uh, working a little harder. Okay, so it puts little flat spots, which look really pretty cool. They almost look diamond cut. Let's go another quarter turn. Okay, now what I'm seeing is it's starting to open up a little bit in here and not so much out here. So Let's uh, let's be bold. Let's go a full half turn this time. And that's what we're getting here. So I think I'm gonna stop there. It's gotten a little wonky where it's twisted a little bit, but I think I can straighten that out. I may actually just put that back in the drill and tighten that back up a little bit. See what happens. I'm going to run it through the mill again. All right, I'm going to take that and I'm going to run that through the mill again. I'm actually going to run it through one of the wire rolls. That, doesn't, uh, that one doesn't do anything. That's kind of rounding it back out again. So 
looking kind of neat. I probably should have nailed this again because I've really, really work hardened it at this point. That looks really cool. I'm going to run it through the smallest one. Didn't really have a plan. I've done a, I've done a bracelet, a ring like this before, but I didn't really have a plan today on what I was going to do because oftentimes I just liked to play with things I'm working on. Give me ideas. That looks really neat. I'm gonna run that through there one more time. Just crank that down a quarter of a turn and run it through one more time here. That looks really neat. So it's back to being round, but it's got like a lot of little cuttings in it. So it almost makes it look diamond cut. Alrighty, so let's uh, cut and we're gonna solder those, uh, this other end. We're gonna cut it to length, then we're gonna solder the opposite end. Then we're gonna bend this. So, I trimmed the end that I soldered, and now I'm gonna add solder to this opposite end, so that way it won't come apart when you go to bend it. It won't try and unravel, basically. So I thought it really elongated the piece, but it, it did not. So I still ended up with just a little more than a 12 inch piece. So I could use the other piece for a ring. I don't know, we'll, we'll save it. We'll save it for something in the future. Set that on there a little bit more. I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna stick solder it. I'm just adding a little bit of solder at the end to seal them up. So you can see that better. Copper requires a lot more heat than silver does. And this is a big, big piece. It's long and it's very dense because we took three wires and compressed them all together. So you're really not gonna get much until you get to cherry red. Still just not enough heat there yet. solder there at the end. That's good. Okay, I am going to quench and pickle this and then we'll come back.
Okay, so we're gonna polish. And you have a couple of options. You, know, you can brass brush it. You can clean it with the sandpaper. You can give it a high polish. You can add patina to it. There's, um, there's really quite a few options. Find my brass brush here. There's really quite a few options. I'm gonna do a high polish. Just gonna brass brush it to start with. Just to work off maybe anything that's left over from the heat that maybe wasn't cleaned off in the pickle. Also, it's been annealed. Let me draw back a little bit. So all that heating we did, uh, it also annealed it. So it's much, much softer at this point. So we have to work harden it too, or it's not going to retain its shape. But first thing we're going to do is we're going to polish this up. Okay, the bench buffer, I'm going to use the uh, white compound on the hard wheel, which is the wheel to the left. <laughs> always put your piece below three o'clock you put it above there it rips it and pulls it out of your hand this compound off of there. You can see that it's uh, really shining up nicely. Okay, I'm going to go over to the red wheel, which is the rouge, and we're going to polish it up further. The white wheel does, uh, does do polishing, but it uh, also has an abrasive in it, so it removes uh, fine scratches and imperfections. So the red rouge uh, does not have any abrasive in it, so it is only meant to shine. Okay. good. camera unfortunately is not really showing this very well, but I'll have a picture so you can see it close up. Here's a little bit better picture. So it almost has kind of a diamond cutting faceting to it. Came out really neat. All right, I'm gonna pop this in my ultrasonic. That's gonna remove the gunk and all that. But before that, I'm gonna scrub it really good with some dish soap. Oh, 
Okay, so that leaves us with needing to do the bending. So I tend to prefer to use the rubber block when I do a cuff bracelet. I get a nice gentle bend that way. So I'm gonna bend one end. And now as you're bending, you're also work hardening. So anytime you're manipulating the metal, you're hardening the metal. So I'm gonna create an oval shape for my bracelet here. And you can, it's still soft enough that you can still, you can do some manipulating by hand. Let's see here. That looks pretty good. All right. So in order to make sure it's nice and flat, we're going to stamp it, pound it actually, between a couple of blocks. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure it is nice and flat. So I've got a rubber block and I've got a little metal plate there. And I'm going to tap it firmly but gently. And I'm gonna do it on the other side. This both work hardens it and makes sure that it is even and flat. And so it is much, much stiffer right now. It's not flimsy like it was before. So that is how you make this pretty cuff bracelet. If you have any questions, be sure to post them. We'll see you again for the next tutorial.